Urban settlement, of course, is completely different. Uh, urban settlers, like today, aren't farmers. They tend to be traders. They tend to be carpenters, like Thomas to start with from New Ross. Uh, and so, settlement in urban areas would always differ to that of the Irish countryside. But in common with the continuing use of certain urban settlements in the 13th century, urban settlement patterns display a continuation and gradual development rather than a complete shift after 1169. Uh, when Robert Fitzstephen, who's the first named leader of anglo Norman Knights in Ireland, uh, when Robert Fitzstephen and his 400 foreign soldiers landed at Banna Bay in May 1169, the first thing they and the local forces of Dermot McMurray did was march into the town of Wexford. And this is obviously because both parties are really aware of the strategic and economic significance of the town. After the fall of Wexford, it was granted by McMurray to Fitzstephen and his brother Morris Fitzgerald, in essence as a prize or a mercenary wage, um, and, and this makes Wexford the very first Anglo-Norman town in Ireland. And yet, archaeologically speaking, there is no direct evidence that Fitzstephen displaced the existing residents of the town. Rather, the archaeological evidence from Wexford suggests that property boundaries remained constant in the South Main Street area from the 11th century through to the 14th century. Rather than evicting the original or existing Hibernian North residents, anglo norman chronicler Gerald of Wales records that the townspeople submitted to Dermot and that he accepted four hostages from their population as assurance of their fidelity. And this is when politics gets done in the 12th century. You, uh, you come in, you host in, you have a battle, you obviously some people die, but in the end you come to some sort of a treaty and I take members of your family or members of your population away and as long as you do things my way, I don't chop their heads off. It's very similar. Uh, so if you want to see those property boundaries, it's a lovely little house. That's uh, what 12th and 13th century works would look like and I'm going to get back to that. And it's here. This subtle little line of posts sticking out of the ground uh, is a property boundary between two houses in South Main Street in Wexford in the 1100s. And that line, as the archaeology builds up and up and up and up in layers, that line remains constant almost today. You can see these property boundaries still between numbers like 84 and 86 South Main Street, that kind of thing. So that's an amazing continuation of urban settlement for the better part of a thousand years. Um, but remember Robert the Stephen, the guy who became the Lord of Wexford with his brother? Um, with the original residence in place in Wexford Town, Fitzstephen was understandably cautious, I would think, of his new holding in Wexford Town. Uh, and Gerald Barry records that in the in early 1169, Fitzstephen spent early 1169 defending a place called the Carrick fortifying place called the Carrick, which is two miles outside the town. Fitzstephen's Ringwork Castle, uh, which is the earliest named and dated Anglo-Norman fortification on the island of Ireland, still stands in the Irish National Heritage Park. Uh, and Fitzstephen, I would imagine, would have been extremely glad of the effort invested in its construction, because he was right about the local residents. In 1171, after the death of Dermot Barbara, the locals rebelled or, uh, or, or expressed their displeasure with his new social standing, and he was besieged here and captured here by the locals in 1171. So when you go to the top of the Heritage Park today, you wander onto that lovely hill overlooking this lane, and you see this rather circular moat or ditch with the 19th century Red Tower in the middle of it. That's the site of a named dated Ringwork Castle built in 1170, and the site of a known battle of 1171 in which Robert Fitzstephen was captured by the locals uh, before being imprisoned on an island in West Park. But, I'm kind of getting the impression that I think nothing changes after 1169. Obviously, um, things do change, um, but the change does not seem to be rapid. For example, in the urban area of Wexford, the urban area is extended and the northern part of the town is walled at some point in the 12th or 13th century. And by 1331, which is 150, 160 years after the arrival of the Anglo Normans, Murage tolls or taxes are being collected from the townspeople for the maintenance of these medieval walls. This is the wall near Selsford Gate. Uh, this circular mural tower, this tower that is an engaged with the wall, that's quite typical of the 13th century uh, in Wexford. You can see very similar towers to that in Waterford. 
and this seems to be the line of the wall built by the Anglo Norman townspeople after the extension of the town. The original town, said the, uh, the town <coughs> Viking or High Burnham Town, was concentrated down the South End. Um, but even at that, the physical reality of life inside the town remains quite constant. Uh, during the Wales, and um, indeed the archaeological evidence suggests that the urban area was enclosed like this, but smaller, both before and after 1169. And inside those walls, the limited evidence we have, archaeological evidence, for house types remains quite consistent. Um, archaeolog archaeological excavations of Ed by Ed Burke revealed from the 11th century house types in South Main Street, Street were of a moderate size. And um, I constructed a post model in a very similar way to the way they were being built in High Burnham and stuff like in Dublin. And the same excavations revealed a very similar form of construction being used in the 13th and 14th century. And my own excavations at South Main Street here on the right and at the Thomas More Tavern in the Corn Market uh, reveal something really similar. Between the 12th and 13th century, in both the original Hibernian North end of the town and in the extended Anglo Norman part of the town, the houses look exactly the same, as if the same people are building them a hundred years apart under completely different rulership. Uh, so that reveals a real consistency of uh, technological techniques and probably of construction. Um, if you want to see, on the right hand side there, that's South Main Street, and these tiny little holes are where the posts of posts and wattle houses were being put into the ground in the 12th century before the Anglo Normans got here by the people who were descended from the Vikings, the Hibernian Norse residents of Western Town. And in the 13th century, half a century after the arrival of the Anglo Normans, exactly the same thing is happening uh, in North Main Street. Posts with wattle put around them and um, Little clay floors, fireplace in the middle of the house, really quite simple and um, efficient buildings. Uh, not big stone Norman castles like we might expect, everything changed, changed utterly. Um, so, post modern houses like this, with a simple internal layout reminiscent of North Dublin, they may not be the only houses being lived in in 13th century Wexford, uh, or 12th century Wexford for that matter, um, but the only ones we know of. So we know there's a consistency, we don't yet know that there's a change. Certainly by about a hundred years after the Anglo Normans arrived, we know that there is um, some more substantial stone buildings being constructed. And if you go along to Shaw's on North Main Street, Shaw's Park Store, there in the mid 13th century, there's a more substantial stone structure built on reclaimed ground. And at that point, the economy and the population is changing and the building technology is changing. But for a very long time, for about part of 100 years after the arrival of the Anglo Normans, we don't see a substantial change in house structures. And this continuity of construction techniques and indeed of lifestyles must be evidence of set population. Um, it's certainly mirrored by continuation of education in pre Norman parishes of Iberius, Mary, Patrick, Dulog, and Wexford Town. In the late 12th and early 13th century, new people were coming to Wexford and new people were in charge, but the resident population of the town appears to have remained partially, if not substantially, in place.